let me start by this conviction. Love has the first word, and love has the last word. It is only in this context that we can hear this content. God created you. You have been created in God's image, beautifully and wonderfully made. In this season of Epiphany, we started out hearing about our truest name, connected to that name of Jesus at his baptism, beloved. You have heard our scripture talk about how deeply God cares for you and that you belong to God. You matter. You right here, right now, matter. And how you live is incredibly important. We are called to be the light of Christ in a world that needs a lot of shining. The darkness can so often seem so overpowering. And we heard last week in this same Sermon on the Mount that you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth and that you are is us together. And now, in this part of the Sermon on the Mount, we hear some scripture that often is used out of context. We'd be quick to judge those who are divorced, but we're not about to go cutting off limbs, right? We are pickers and choosers of our scripture often, and that's why context and content matter. Motive matters deeply as well. A friend of mine who comes out of a different Christian tradition was asking me if I would be preaching on Valentine's Day this weekend. That's really not a Lutheran thing. You know, we, we have these scriptures, and I was thinking, isn't that the irony of it, that this scripture we read comes in the context of a time where we celebrate love and we try to let that light shine. And yet maybe that's exactly how it is. Some of you know that my daughter, Sophie, has spent her entire um, college time overseas until this semester. Well, it was last year when it was, I was able to communicate with her a little bit better when she was in Australia, that she told me this same thing several times. You know, Mom, a bunch of my friends have started smoking. What? Come on, these are young people. Haven't they read everything? But part of what it was is many of them spent a year in Europe, and Europeans still smoke regularly. Yeah, Mom, I don't know, they're smoking. And at one point, there was something that I had that weird spidey sense of, and I wondered if she was trying to soften me up, <laughs> that maybe she herself had started smoking, to which I said very clearly, well, you know, if you picked up smoking, I'm never gonna pay for the rest of college. I was clear about that. You are done. You're smoking. You're going to get lung cancer. I'm not paying for cigarettes. I'm not paying for college. Period. The end. You ever said things like that to people you love? Thanks be to God right now. I don't believe she is smoking, but I'll tell you when I saw her at Christmas, occasionally I would kind of smell her clothes. <laughs> you know, there was that suspicion. But when we love someone, we want the best for them. Oh, how we do. And God wants that for us so many steps beyond what we would ever ask. So God calls us to behavior that lets our light shine. God calls us to tap into this love we have received and share that. Because if we only behave well when someone's watching or there's a threat, you know, there's that kind of cash register honesty, but deep inner deception. If we're only kind to those we like or who are what we consider our kind, 
That is not what Jesus is speaking of in this love of neighbor. Because when we love our neighbors, it's the way we're expressing our deep love for God. When we look in the mirror and see and identify the beloved child of God, we then open ourselves to receive God's grace, compassion, and mercy so that we look into the eyes of every other created in God's image as beloved. You heard me share last week how year after year my mother would just ask for that one thing for her birthday, that we would just treat each other well, to which we regularly tried to just purchase something instead. But here, Jesus is upping the ante. He wants to get your attention. So what are the stumbling blocks for you in loving your neighbor? In kindness, compassion, in morality and ethical behavior. But what you might need to ask first is, has there been a stumbling block for you first? Is there a part of your life for which you'd like to deny God access? Is there a part of you that keeps you in darkness, that you believe is unacceptable to this God who created you? Start there. Start looking into your own eyes, examining your own behavior. Because maybe you've heard this, it isn't rocket science. I heard it first when I was 17 from my friend who was really wise. I think he was 18. But this really did come to me as a bit of wisdom. And he said, you know, usually, I was having a problem with someone. He said, usually the problems we have with someone are the things we struggle with ourselves. Whew, wow. And how true. <laughs> because remember, have a problem with someone, you have a problem. You might want to put it on that someone, but Jesus is going to call you beloved and by name to take care of your heart, to let God into those places that maybe are filled with fear judgment, resentment, those things that get in our way of being set free. Because this love that God has for us, it's greater. It is greater than any human love we can ever have for one another. And my hope and prayer is that you can think of someone who has loved you in your darkest moments. That you can think of someone who showed you deep compassion when you could barely get out of bed or, or lift your head up. And then I want you to take that experience and expand it beyond what you could even think. This is the love of God for you, shared in Jesus Christ. So don't use scripture to hurt yourself or someone else. Don't take these things out of context, especially because we love to judge other people's sins. We're pretty sure they're much worse often than our own. Instead, be reminded, love has the first word and created you. Love will absolutely have the last word for you. You are chosen, you are claimed, and you are connected to God. And ask for help when you need it. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. We are this together. And God will not call us to places, but God does not promise to equip us. So if you are in a tough place, let there be even that slightest opening and curiosity of God's absolute love and presence for you there. The light
light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome.